Neural network only takes numbers as input and only outputs as number. So what happens when we have a character-based input such as A, B, C, D, E, we actually can run to a two-step process to convert them to number. For example, the first step is called factorization, which essentially take all the unique value in your list and convert them to different level. So A, B, C, D, E, because they're all unique, will be converted to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So neural network also like to work with value between 0 0.1. So what we can do is run something called min max normalization. So that will take the highest value in your list and then you and put it as 1 and the lowest value in your list and put it at 0 and then everything will squash in between 0 and 1 and essentially we have converted A, B, C, D, E into all value between 0 and 1. However, sometimes when a neural network output the value between 0 and 1, we we'll actually need to reverse them to A, B, C, D, E, and here is how you do it. So to scale a value, we take the raw value, we minus the minimum value in the list, and we also divide by the maximum minus the minimum value. So that will give us scale x. So to actually get x from scale x, we have to actually push up the min and max and times it over to the scale data, and then we also shift the minimum over to plus it to the other side. So our final raw data will equals to the scale data times the minimum minus maximum plus the minimum data in the list. I've written this very short script in R show how you can actually convert uh, alphabet into 0 0.1 and then back convert those value between 0 0.1 back into the alphabet. So the first thing we do is actually just create an empty list. So I'll call the object data frame. It makes sense later. And now on for the first column of this list, I'm going to pipe something called lattice, which is basically all the numbers between the alphabet. So there'll be 26 characters inside. And then I'm going to convert my data frame into a data frame so we can actually store it in a vertical format. So you can look more about data object. Maybe I'll link a video right here to understand. But basically, that will create our first value of letters that we need to process. So in order to actually convert this um, alphabet into factors, the in R is pretty easy. You just run a S factor and this will create the vector the columns that we created just now into a new column called letter factors. And you realize that when you look back into a data object, they look exactly the same. And when you see it, it's exactly the same, but it's being stored slightly differently in the computers. And to see the classes, you can actually print them out with so, so you can see that one is a character and second one has been actually converted into a factor. So once you get that into factors, it's actually important for you to extract the levels of those factors because they'll be very useful later. We need to know what does individual one to 26 actually means. So once we actually convert, well, once we've done the level extraction, we can actually convert the level to numeric. And you can actually see that now our ABC to Z has been converted into 1 to 26. So if you directly convert letters to numeric, it will not work. You have to run through the factors um, process and also to actually detect any unique uh, value in between because we do not want to double store the the factors. So the next one is actually create a simple function called normalize. It's actually just convert all the value between zero and one. Uh, we can do that by doing by x minus the minimum value in the list and then the maximum value minus the minimum value. So if it's one to 26, the current value is five. It will be five minus one and 26 minus one. So we can actually position five on where they are between one to 26. So it would be a sequence process like that. So once we've done the normalization function, remember we have not run it yet. We are just running the normalization function. We have to extract the mean and max within the original list before we run the min max normalization. So as you can see, our maximum is 26, our minimum is one. So that's pretty straightforward. As once we've done that, then we can run the normalization value and let's check our data frame again. So you will see that one is actually mapped to zero, five is 0 0.16, 23 is 0 0.88 and 26 is actually one. So now we have if essentially convert A to Z into value between zero and one. So that's pretty easy for the machine to, to start working with already. However, to actually reverse that, we just do the reverse. So to reverse min max is pretty straightforward. 
a little bit of algebra lesson there. You just push the min max to the other side, and then you plus back the minimum to the or to the value that you're calculating. So this is pretty much just written exactly as it is. I will pipe it into a new column called level factor reverse. As you can see on the data frame right here, you can see that now we have essentially convert our zero to one into one to 26. So we want that now is actually to reverse the labeling. So one to be equate to one, uh, 26 will be equate to Z and so on and so forth. So in order to do that, I'm going to use G sub here, which is a substitution. So I'm going to run through all the levels that we have. So essentially, uh, look at A. So where is a 1? Replace it with A. Where is a B? And replace 2 with a B and so on and so forth through the substitution process. And we're going to do it one by one until we finish up all the level. So there will be 26 different cycles there. And we're going to actually pipe it into an object called temp temporary. So you can see that we have successfully replaced 1 to 26, which is actually this 1. Okay, so we have essentially convert them into their uh, labels counterpart. So once we've done that, we're going to pipe the temporary uh, object into the data frame letter reverse column. And you can see now the first column, which is what we start out with A to Z, and then we convert it into factors. We convert those factors into numeric. We convert those numeric into min max. And we do the reverse of the min max and we do the reverse of the labeling. So this will essentially allow you to use the min max into the input for the matrix. And if your output as a lattice, for example, you're using autoencoder, you can use these two function to actually reverse the process so you get back whatever label that you want. So it will be always a good idea to actually remove any temporary object that you created so you don't hook up your RAM. So that's basically the whole process of how you do a min max, sorry, a factorization, a min max normalization, and reverse the two process so you actually get back the original. So that's all I have to say for the video today. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.